Hello and welcome to our first webinar for this year um, where we have the topic well insured winter sports season is now on. I hope you had all um, a great um, holiday season started well to the new year and have everything prepared for that year already. We thought um, as the first topic, it would be good to talk a bit about international health insurance as well. And we have with us um, Aiton who will um, present passport um, card, which is one of the um, great um, possibilities or options you have if you want to um, take care of getting your assignees or your staff being insured um, well while they are um, on assignment. As we did it also last year, we will have first that short presentation from us, and then afterwards we will answer all your questions you may have. So please put in that chat box you will find on the right-hand side down. Please write down all your questions you have because now you have the expert um, to answer all your questions around it and take that um, opportunity. Also on the right hand side down you will find the slides which you can download while the presentation um, is on. So where are we with international health insurance? I think it is an area each employer or all employers at some point have to take care of and have to look at because one of the points is that it is as an employer it's your duty of care to um, look at that as well. Now there are in some countries we have the situation that also for local employees you will have to take care of health insurance matters. Now in from a Swiss point of view, that is not um, an issue because here in Switzerland, it's a private affair. However, if you send then people abroad, it will be becoming kind of your affair because you, I mean, it's one of your tasks or one of the things you really would, would like to do is to take care that everybody is um, safely and securely insured. And in case there is a need of medical assistance abroad, that you have the um, su sufficient coverage. Now, there are, as always, um, in global mobility areas, there is not just one option, there are a couple of options. And one of the options you have, if, you, if we're looking at assignees or assignments, then you can either say, okay, employee, take care, yourself about it and take out um, a local health insurance in the country of destination so that that person is sufficiently covered in case of need. That is one option. However, what you also have to think about is, is that in case he has to go back to, um, to the home country, maybe on from home leave um, perspective or on business trips or whatever, then you also need to think about how is that person then actually um, insured. And still you will have the topic about um, business trips where you also have to think about how the person is um, covered. The other possibility we will see um, sometimes is that the employees are asked to take out just the international coverage in their current health insurance. That at least is in Switzerland one of the things some companies tend to do until they see the benefit or they see that maybe if we take out an international health insurance or an international plan, we are actually much better off. Um, that is usually also surprise, not kind of surprisingly, but um, if you look at the benefits those international health insurance plans have, they are more than the usual health insurance, but the prices are usually also much better. Um, some may think, okay, why is that? I mean, one of the major re reasons for that is that 
certain risk groups are not covered in the international health insurance plan and therefore the risk is less kind of less and therefore the premiums can be much better um, as in the local health insurance like you won't have old people um, covered or um, lots of small um, children um, as well as usually as an as an employer you will only send healthy people abroad and not people who are actually already um, um, sick therefore from an if somebody asks us um, for a recommendation then we usually say whenever it is possible try to see to find first of all an equal treatment see about the administration and then usually you see that an international plan where you, you will be able to cover actually everybody might be the um, best um, option and when we thought about the today's web today's coffee and consulting um, event and who we actually want to invite as one of the providers we thought about passport card and thought that would be one of the for us at least we came across to um, with it last year and it's something definitely um, worth looking um, close at so i will hand over the words to you atm the stage is yours now thank you so much thank you so much uh, it's great to be a partner of yours i appreciate uh, all those words um and yeah let's um let's dive deep into that so uh just in a few words about passport card about myself uh, i've been uh, the ceo of passport card europe for uh, the past four years um our european headquarters are located in hamburg where all the administration and service and medical care of our members is done from uh that's also one of our unique usps that we do not outsource and we're doing everything from here uh from hamburg um in my previous life i uh, launched a digital and innovation uh, division of um a to a tier one uh, international bank uh so not coming from very remotely to the insurance industry you know banking is quite uh, uh still within the financials but i'm um, very very happy and proud to do something completely different and i will share with you in a few moments why it is so unique and, and different so if we move on to the next slide, um, who is Passport Card? Um, Passport Card is a member of the White Mountains um, group. White Mountains situated in the New York Stock Exchange for over six billion dollars, um, and is uh, a holding company only for top uh, insurance uh, businesses. Uh, we have branches and operations in Australia where we are selling the line of business of travel in Israel where we are doing both international health and travel and in Europe here in Hamburg uh, with also um, satellite offices that we have in Switzerland Cyprus and in the UK um, all targeted to European exposure which can easily mean going to Europe, coming from Europe or working through European intermediary, all in all, it's almost covering everything that you can think about. We have over 2 million customers around the world, uh, where in other parts of the world we are uh, carrying our own uh, risk with the uh, front insurance that we, um, that we hold. Here in Europe, we decided to go hand in hand with Allianz, whom we are the biggest partner in the world too. So um, all of our business is 100% managed and mandated by us with the Allianz uh, backing support uh, to jointly front the European market on our target groups. And that's a partnership that we are very, very happy about. Again, being their biggest partner in the world uh, for many years now. Um, and fully taking uh, the reinsurance risk. Um, in addition, we won extremely amazing prizes in the past uh, years, the German Innovation Award uh, in the top place. We won the top employer, 1% of all German employers uh, recently. 
um, inclusivity awards and so on. Uh, but let's let's really see what we are actually doing here and, and how we actually changed the um, the insurance uh, the insurance schemes. So I share with you already on the left uh, stage what uh, uh, what areas we are operating in. Just to share in a few words also from the number point of view, because at the end of the day, you know, you're asking yourself, and in a second again, we'll see how it works, but you're asking yourself, what is so different? What is so innovative in another health insurance? Everyone have uh, amazing looking uh, families uh, with smiles and mothers kissing babies on their brochures, and everyone is saying, we're going to give you the best service ever, right? I never came across a company that will tell you our target is to give you medi mediocre service um, and we don't have the great plans for you. So no one says that and so it's important to really look at the numbers to understand what, what we're dealing with. So um, IPMI, uh, International Private Health Insurance, it's something that you buy and you buy it for, for either for life or for your expatriation experience. And so it is something that is harder to measure when you talk about retention. But again, as we're also doing corporate uh, travel and we have leisure travel in other lines of business uh, and areas, then you can really see when is a happy customer and how much is our retention uh, around the world. And that's, I think, the highest in the industry. Um, we are also able to provide extremely, extremely autonomous services and by saying autonomous, I'm not reducing from the service aspect. You'll see how we take that seriously and how we are doing things that no one else is doing. But I'm saying it from the perspective of a person being for the first time in the world able to approve in one second a claim for themselves without any little midgets behind the screen that are rejecting or approving claims. So 70% of what we're doing is fully autonomous with the hands of the customers. Our net promoter score, which is basically a single question that is targeted to see how much you're happy with the services and would you recommend it to someone else, is four times um, the market uh, industry average. And our loss ratio is extremely beneficial because we have a lot of cost containment aspects in our solution. Um, so if we could, with your permission, dive to the next one. Um, as I mentioned, White Mountains are the sharing, um, 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 the controlling shareholder, and have purchased uh, half of the more than half of the shares of the whole Passport Card and David Shield Group around the world, being their uh, one of the most um, compelling. Uh, international private health insurances um, in, in their holdings. Um, if you go to the next one, please. Okay. So let's talk for a second about, about our solutions. The, the passport card, what is the passport card? It's in, it's in our name, it's, you know, it's, it's in the, the first logo that you see it's some kind of a credit card looking like, and everyone has a credit card. So how is it different? What is it really you know, sharing? And, and the truth is that this is where we have been able to change the, the how insurance works. Um, how would you do that in the world, old world or in the um, traditional aspects of insurance? You have a claim, you go to the doctor, you treat it, you pay for it. You hope for the best that you will get the money back so you fill in a claim um, subrogation uh, form. You send it, you're having a bit of an argue with the insurance company that wants to reject it and, and pay less. And at the end, you're getting some or all of it. Um, and that's how it works, right? So what happens if it doesn't really work that much? And here, maybe I'm a bit deviating from our slides, but I think it's worth a discussion. So if it doesn't work this way, you as an employee would go to your HR and you would say, I'm not happy because I am supposed to get treatment. I'm supposed to get money back from my insurance and I didn't. Then your HR would ask you what happened and you would have to share 
I have this and this uh, problem. I didn't get the money back. It happened yesterday. It happened three weeks ago. It happened a month ago. Uh, I'm still waiting. I approached twice, so on and so forth. What just happened now, I think, is much more is much harder and more severe than any aspect of one euro more or one euro less on the premiums that that as an employer you'll pay for the services. Because what just happened now is basically a situation where your employee had to share with you their problematic experience with the insurance. And on top of the uncomfortable situation and lack of satisfaction, also sharing with you by default the medical situation that they obtained. Now, not only you have a duty as an employer to really cover the cost that you promised that employee. So you provided that employee with a table of benefits with a certain uh, with a certain um, um, uh, policy that needs to be paid. If that is not paid, it's your own risk. Maybe also contractually you promised to take care of all the medical costs. Maybe if you're in Germany, for instance, that's also the law. No matter what you bought, what policy you bought to the employee, you have to pay all the medical um, concerns of that employee, whether the insurance pays it or not. So in addition to that duty of care, whether it is contractually or, or, or legal oriented, you also have general duty of privacy, medical privacy, GDPR. Those are not words that are new to us in the HR world. We are putting so much effort into preserving it and into making sure that we are adhering to it in all of what we are doing. And especially, of course, when it comes to, to, to health aspects that is very sensitive and are defined in the privacy law as sensitive information. So by providing um, the, by maybe providing a, um, a problematic insurance scheme or um, having troubles in adjudicating claims, you end up in having a very much more serious breach with regards to your GDPR requirements. And what we have been doing basically is providing all sorts of solutions that enable the HR to completely deal with it, but also not even have to deal with it. So that situations will not even go there and that enables us to reduce the uh, attention that HR have on those aspects. So um, the card, and that is what is unique uh, with our solution, is not linked to your own money as a person. That is, you know, that is any other card can do. Uh, the card is actually linked to our insured money, insurance money. And the experience would be that you as an employee and every employee has a card would simply swipe the card at the doctor or uh, in the pharmacy and have it paid directly from our money. And that's it. There is no handing in forms, request for reimbursement. Um, there are no aspects of waiting. Um, and this thing going back to autonomous are done in two presses of a button from every, any person's app on, on their cell phone. So the good thing is our solutions, and we coded themselves, they're patented, are, um, are actually understanding your whereabouts, your coverage plan, the treatment that you said that you're going to undergo, and that is applicable under your, um, under your coverage scheme and the customary uh, rate of that treatment anywhere in the world that we have gathered for 23 years in our operations. Um, and so immediately the card will be paid directly. And if you try to take it to the um, casino, the restaurant, or paying the taxi, it will not go through. You can try, it, it will not go through. So of course there are a lot of anti-fraud mechanisms that keep the insured population intact and, and safe. Um, so this is how it's done. It's done 
completely different. You first get the money before you even went to the doctor. You don't need to know how much. You don't need to handle the money. It just know it just knows it automatically. Um, if you ask me, but you know, not everyone have an app, and no, not everyone can deal with that. Even if it's the easiest thing in the world, sometimes people don't like it. I will tell you, of course, my father, for instance. You know, I call my father. He answers the doorbell. You know, the the um, it's very hard um, with him to do anything that is digital, and still we want his money, uh, and we want to have him covered. So what do we do? Uh, we have a 24/7 in German, Swiss, um, um, French, and Spanish call center. In addition, there are 14 different languages, but we cannot obtain them them 24/7. But 24-7, those languages that I shared with you will be answered in an SLA of 10 seconds from the call center that is behind that wall, behind my office, uh, and we don't outsource it. So it's not like it's answered from a remote center somewhere in uh, India or, or Poland or uh, any other great locations, but that our ability to control uh, is harder. Um, so what we have is our own internal health center and support center and in 10 seconds you will be directed to any provider and of course a good thing is that you don't you're not obliged to a certain network you can go to any doctor of choice anywhere in the world and get 100% treated so of course that this is where we were able to uh, make sure that you get immediately the money um, and you get uh, also the clarity and the peace of mind um, that, that you are 100% covered. Uh, if you would help me go to the next slide and the next one, yes. So, of course, I shared with you that you can do it also 100% autonomously and this is where um, your app will actually show you when your card is ready to use, this thing takes round about two seconds from when you pressed it. And it also shows you our providers around you or any provider that you might uh, wish for. Why did I say ours? Because we can give you a rating of members that used them before. Um, but you can, of course, go to any provider of choice around you. And if you see on the left side that you also can read the pin, than if you're required to provide PIN upon using the card. So that is also uh, something that the, that the system will uh, show you immediately. And of course, if you decide to call us 24-7, uh, we will share it uh, with you over the phone. Um, if you could help me to go to the next one, um, I think that is also something that we have discussed. And yes, going into the product. So. Um, Thank you very much. So the most important thing is that you know you don't always need to have the full and most comprehensive plan. You don't need that always. So if you're sending employees to Africa, you don't need a five million euro annual coverage uh, for doctors that you know that you know the most comprehensive and complicated aspect will end up in. Um, a few hundred thousands. Um, so it is very important for us to provide all sorts of uh, coverage limits and, and benefit schemes that can be very, very much tailored to, to your needs. Um, and with that said, it's also important for us to give a one-stop shop because what happens when you're sending employees abroad one thing is that you have expats, you know, they're coming from one country to the other. It's uh, the legal aspects are problematic or how are the tax aspects of each and every member are, are concerning, visa aspects are concerning, but also you might have people that are coming to support um, uh, in an ongoing manner. Um, and also you might want to have life and disability coverage uh, in case that something hard happens. Um, and so we are able to provide the solutions for all of that in one-stop shop and also support you with free um, uh, visa, uh, work visa services 
uh, by our uh, experts that can really uh, that can really support with that for selected um, countries. Um, so that's our target. We are doing only international health for the past 23 years, and we really want to support uh, on that. Um, it's not something that we're doing on the way in order to sell, you know, motor insurance or other aspects. This is our bread and butter, and this is what we are uh, we are actually doing. Uh, if you can go to the next one, then thank you very much. Then also, I think it's very important to know that overall, when you speak about international health, you usually speak about two different aspects. One is individuals. You know, I decided I want to go and uh, work from Spain right now uh, in Mallorca, which is anyway the 17th state of Germany, as people see it. Uh, so uh, that is, you know, a, a scheme that I can provide to to myself and to my my dependents, family members, or as we said before, um, as HR to provide coverage to your employees going outside. And this is something that can be done from one employee to endless. So if I look at the most, um, the, the biggest and largest uh, um, group that we have is uh, Lufthansa. So for instance, all the air crew um, and pilots uh, of Lufthansa around the world are covered with us. Anyone that you will see on an international flight will have with them their uh, passport card. Um, and that is, uh, of course, something that we're able to provide on a huge scale. But also, you have so many companies that have that start with one employee and might grow or start and stay with one employee, and that's perfectly okay. And for us, it's very, very important to provide the same uh, solutions uh, to all of them. Um, so uh, that is something that uh, that we're doing, and we're also for larger groups and able to to bring on board members without medical assessment. Uh, of course, when it's a huge group, it's also a hard thing to um, to do that assessment. But for smaller groups, that's actually something that, for the benefit of the company, I recommend because um, you want to know that you're sending someone abroad that 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 can. Uh, that can perform their duty and that will be able to to do that um, usually high level position uh, and that is a lot on their back and so that is something that we are able to basically support with and help in the process uh, for the company. Um, if you would help me go to thank you very much so um, as I mentioned we have three different tiers of, uh, of plan the most comprehensive everything is included including even um, babysitter for your children if you're in the hospital um, and of course we also do internally all the rescue search and rescue um, I can give you examples that now with the riots in Peru we send ourselves it was all over the media um, uh, our own internal rescue team uh, no one got injured, no one uh, was ill, and still uh, we found 36 uh, employee, uh, employees and individual members uh, of different covered um, uh, companies that uh, were in those areas that we were fearful that would not be able to leave the area afterwards, and we sent our own uh, teams to rescue them in, in uh, by foot, by vehicles, and then chartered our own uh, plane to fly them um, into their countries of origins. Uh, those things are not in the terms of and conditions. Those things are not in the policy, but this is just our DNA. We've done the same uh, on the Polish border in the Ukraine um, when last year, basically, and. I can share that a few years back when there was an earthquake in Apad, the first airplane to touch base on the ground was not the Red Cross, was not the UN, it was our own private chart, uh, chartered plane uh, that, we, um, that we took and uh, sent to the area even before obtaining the permission to land because 
we wanted to make sure that all of our members are, are okay. And this is just the DNA of what we're doing. Um, so the premium plan is the most comprehensive um, and the compact plan is the entry level plan that would basically cover you for almost anything inpatient, meaning hospitalization, but will also provide you with a thousand euro for outpatient and clinics uh, outside the hospital a year. And this is, for instance, a great plan if you're going to Africa, you don't need more than that. And of course, comfort is somewhere in the middle. If we would go to the next one, please. So we're looking at the world map, obviously, and um, we are covering in over 150 countries around the world. And what we have done is divert the world into zones, and those are zones of pricing. So um, if you go to the USA, for instance, that would be the most expensive country of destination, uh, and we will price you accordingly, but you're covered anywhere in the world. The other side of that is if you go to region four, which is Africa, and this is the most uh, cost-friendly uh, zone of um, destination, you will still be covered worldwide, excluding USA for um, plant treatment, but also in the USA for medical emergencies, basically travel, medical travel that you have. So that also goes to our DNA of not saying no when someone needs us. So you're always covered worldwide, and uh, no matter where you're going, but you're paying according to really the country or destination where you're really uh, gonna spend most of your time. And in this manner, we are able to uh, really tailor our prices according to um, the destinations and not provide a, you know, a one, one more expensive tier uh, pricing. So we, we believe that any person should basically pay their own premium and not have uh, the whole pool suffer from, uh, from one tariff. Um, but again, making sure that everyone is covered worldwide, no matter where they are. And then if we go to the next one, I don't want to go, thank you so much. Uh, I don't want really to go into the premium samples, but we can do it. I'll share with you why. Um, if you're going, if you're choosing individual coverage, it's more straightforward, right? Um, uh, and you can also choose inpatient deductibles and so on that can reduce your premium in 50%. But if you're a group, and that's something that is very, very important to know, then what you would want to do is send a list of the destinations and ages of the members. Their names are not important at the time of offering. Um, and then we can give you a, a, price, a, off, a, a price offering, a quote. And of course, it's important to know that there are a few aspects that, uh, that are important here. The destination, as we saw before, the destination can really affect the price. The ages, obviously, the more senior we become, uh, the price goes uh, up, and also the group size. So group contracts generally are at third, uh, 33% uh, most cost-friendly than individual prices, but in addition to that, additional reductions can be made uh, due to size and are made due to size. Um, and if it's a very big group, then also having claims history and information about how that group was behaving in the past can really support in providing additional benefits and, and, uh, and reduce costs. Uh, in addition to that, on groups, of course, at the end of the day, you're also tailoring it to the demands or the requirements of the different members, and that's something that can easily be done as well. So all of those will affect the, the price. If we go to the next one, so just to share with you, if you were me, I would remember 5% of what I just said. Uh, <laughs> I'm usually calling myself a goldfish without the gold. Um, so three seconds and I forget, but for that matter, we, we, we have um, brochures that inform about our service and our card and how it works and how you can do things with the app. 
um, we have policy documents, application forms, and so on, but you also don't need all of that because you can simply give us an email or a call and, and we will provide you with all the information that's quite easy. Uh, we are very quick to move, that's one of our USPs. Um, so again, if, if there is a medical question, it will be answered immediately within the same day. Uh, if there is a quote and question, it will be answered by the next. Um, so that is something that is very important for us to be, and you can of course take advantage of that and, uh, and use us. And uh, I think that should be around the last slides, am I correct? That of course, okay, that is also something interesting to see. Not only that we have HR portals, we also have brokers portals. So your brokers that is working amongst, you can also see the real status of where and what happens with all the claims of the members and, and their situation, the whereabout, um, and anything that is related to that. So transparency is also something that we are keen about and both HR and brokers have full transparency. And now I, I will be more silent and, and can would love to answer all your questions if you have. Thank you, that was great. And I think everybody has a good impression on your, your product already. Um, there's one question. You said that if um, there's anything like the earthquake or whatever, you are the one you will actually um, check on the individuals and then um, really fly them out. Now, you said that is in your DNA, but I assume now um, um, that there's also a fee attached to it. So in case they are my employees, and if I'm the employer, then definitely I would like them to being flied out. Um, but is it then something you will tell upfront what the cost will be or how does that usually work? And also, you also do the kind of repatriation in case there is an yeah. employee, for example, in the um, where in China in the last... Um, little village and um, he has a severe situation and um, we would like to or the employee would like to actually being um, or being flied out to to Switzerland for example because he wants to be here near his family and go to a hospital and that is one of the situation we have with or, a couple of times a year where people would like to be going to another hospital and then in the end there's a huge cost attached to it because it costs immensely to get someone from one place to the other plane if they can't use the commercial um, plane. Of course, of course, thank you for that. I think two great questions I would like to answer. So of course, uh, um, with regard, I'll start with the second, the medical evacuation. That is of course part of the, the plan itself um, we always, uh, if there is no avail availability to treat um, a person um, in the area, we will always take uh, the medical evacuation uh, uh, cost. We have done that extensively throughout the years. I can share with you that during COVID, we were the only ones to have uh, one flight with four different air bubbles uh, um, from Africa. Um, we've flown from Africa to Europe and there was another 1 million euro medical evacuation from, from the States. Uh, so definitely those things are always part of the plan and we're doing that internally. I will share a story with you. Um, my father was hospitalized. Um, my father is living in Israel. He was hospitalized in Germany a few years back and that was before I started working with Passport Card and it was covered with another company um, and I got uh, a call that uh, my father has a, a brain tumor um, but luckily I, I know from the hospital that that was ruled out 24 hours prior so it means that not only they felt comfortable to inform that but also not check in the 24 hours before uh, hand uh, the situation 
and took 24 hours even to inform. So of course that was not the situation at the time, and thank God. And and um, and then we had to fight with that ensure um, not to have layover stops just to uh, have a cost containment aspect. But um, basically once I I came inside the company and learned um, that we are taking care of all of that ourselves, and that's not a third party that has just one. Uh, one um, target of cost containment because that's what they're measured on and we are reviewing our service and our name uh, and the satisfaction of our clients and that is what leads mm -hmm. us then that's I think our biggest uh, uh, plus point on this one. With mm -hmm. regard to search and rescue this is also part of, of our plans. Um, I want to share that on the reason that I brought that as a DNA aspect is because in those aspects, it was not a matter of people being lost. We know mm. we know exactly where they are. They were not sick and they were not ill. So in terms, in, mm. in, in no policy ever would you would you um, be um, sending uh, teams. But that's what we are doing because um, for us, exactly th this is exactly the times where we're needed and the words of the policy are not. Um, are not what directs us uh, with that regard. So, of course, uh, also when you when we speak about Nepal, no one was injured, but it was it is a destination, or at least at the time, of many um, surrogacy um, work, and and it was important for us to make sure um, that we are able to bring everyone that we could. We also brought members that are not covered with us. Um, so again, those things are built in in the plans, but we also would take action when there are situations that are not yet there. Perfect. You said earlier there's the you can as an employer I can basically choose to have the group plan. Usually from other insurance companies, it is there needs to be at least two people. Um, before it is a group and sometimes even two is not enough for them. Um, how do you define groups? Two or or one. is it already one and with the potential that there might be someone else coming up? So for us a group contract it can be one employee and what mm -hmm. creates a group contract is that the employer pays for the employee. So you have an employer oh. who is the policy holder and the employee is the beneficiary and that creates a plan and you can add on that plan as many people that as you want and you can uh, take out members mm. during the term so we have a lot of flexibility with that okay and the class question that is something maybe more swiss specific because in switzerland we do have based on our residency we do have a the requirement to have an health insurance so usually um, also, when people are sent abroad, they need to keep their Swiss health insurance while they are assigned abroad, because you would like, as an employer, you would like to keep them in the social security system, and that is one of the requirements. Now, clearly, the Swiss health insurance is not sufficient when they go abroad. Is there then something like, if I take on top, because that's what you usually you would do, you will take on top of it an international health insurance plan. So if I would choose yours, then the premium will kind of reflect it that I have already in health insurance. Or um, is that something which you say, no, because you, you can't really make that um, difference in the end from the pricing perspective? So definitely we'll reflect and then that's why I said that of course for groups it's very important to discuss or to pro to pro uh, provide a quote for each group. It would definitely reflect that and not only that we would be able to tailor a plan or to offer you a plan where on the big things for instance if someone has cancer uh, requirement and so on and so forth mm -hmm. we'll be just able to bring them back and I think also from the employer's point of view, that would be their requirement. And so you know mm -hmm. that for those aspects, you will not be, the international coverage will not be used. And mm -hmm. so definitely that will take 
um, all those aspects into consideration and the premium will be much lower. Mm. Super. These are basically all the questions we, we had so far. Um, I'm sure there will be from the participants maybe questions afterwards. So please feel free to reach out directly to Ethan. He will uh, be able to answer you all the questions in that regard. Thank you very much for your time and your expertise Good. and everything. And you. um, you. you're welcome. And then mm -hmm. maybe the last two minutes, I just would like to um, show you what you will or what you can expect from us this year. So next thing which I invite would like you invite to is our webinar about cross-border um, workers. So in case that is something as a topic you are interested on, then maybe you would like to check out our next webinar or the next seminar we have is about compliance um, aspects about international um, assignments, cross-border employment. That is also, I think, one of the huge topics for this year that compliance is getting more and more important and we definitely have to look at it a bit um, um, closer. And um, as last year, um, where we started with our summit, we will do one again this year because we had lots of people um, asking for it already and um, it was fun, it was great. Um, and yes, we would like to do that this year as well. We are currently designing um, and finishing the, the program and it will be taking place on the 10th and 11th May. So thank you very much for today and for our first coffee and consulting and we are looking forward to meet you at one of our other events or anywhere else um, again. Thank you and have a nice week. Bye.